entire temperatures in Gran Turismo 7. A complete mystery, completely locked until now. Using the SIM dashboard app on Android platform, this dashboard actually gives you more information than Gran Turismo itself delivers. You can see tyre temperatures live as they happen as you're driving. In this video, I'm going to explore everything to do with tyre temperatures. Running the usual Sardinia grind in my favourite Ferrari 458 GT3 car. You can start to see straight away the tyre temperatures start at around 60 degrees front and rear tyre temperatures. And this is marked as grey in the app. The app uh, thresholds are determined within the app i'm going to go by them being the right ones but you can see right now in the braking zone as we steer as we uh, go into the braking zone it just slightly peaks the temperature of the front right tire now this app is only available on android it isn't available on ios as i know just yet so search sim dashboard on the android store uh, this is the one here by uh, strider dash it um, the app is completely free but the GT7 module is a small charge within the app. I think I paid about £3.50 uh, for this. So I'm just gonna test this out for you guys. You can see how it all works and you can see if there's something you want to go ahead and try out for yourself. And I have to say the tire temperatures in Gran Turismo 7 seem to be much more complicated than just a general overall temperature. It seems that when you uh, brake hard or, or wheel spin the car, if you get a peak of temperature, that will fall off quite quickly but a sustained amount of load on a tire that builds heat over time that heat stays in the tire this is really quite interesting to me so as you can see already the rear temperature is up to about 70 degrees uh, still not within a, a colored operating window yet uh, the front tires are a little bit colder this car is a mid-engine rear wheel drive car so the weight distribution is quite a bit far to the rear i think this is some of the reason why we heavily wear the rear tires in this car and also why you can see that the rear tires just seem to generate more sustained heat the front peak from time to time but as you'll see as the race goes on the front, the rear tires will just continue to start building heat over and over a little bit later in the video i'm going to do two runs side by side with two different driving techniques to see if we can influence the tire temperature and tire wear through this uh, sardinia grind this is a real tire killer of a race now it's really interesting to see through this first thing you can see we are gradually starting to build heat into our tires and we're almost like halfway through lap number two for me the way the car feels without knowing this data it felt like the tires were up to temperature after maybe four or five corners but as we're seeing in the telemetry data right now on screen i think it takes over a lap to really get the tires into the uh, the green operating window i think that is around 75 to 80 degrees uh, I think that's where the threshold is set within the app. I'm not sure whether it's derived from the game or whether it's derived from the app developers. Why on earth this data is not within Gran Turismo 7? I really have no idea. If you wanted to maybe enable advanced mode for your hood, why, do, why aren't we seeing this data? You see there just a heavy uh, braking zone and some steering inputs really peak that front right tyre temperature. Now this is greatly linked to the traction circle principle. I've got a video on my channel, I'll link it at the end of this video. But as you push the tires beyond their traction circle, it really starts to peak their temperature. Starting lap number three now, and the rear tires look to be perfectly within operating window, but the front tires are still a little bit cold. And this is a bit of a theme through the whole of the video with the weather where this car drives. Uh, specifically the mid-engine rear-wheel drive car it just seems almost impossible to generate enough front tire temperature aside from a, a spike of tire temperature in some of the big braking zones the overall uh, heat in the front tire just never really stays if you are enjoying this video if you are finding this information very useful then make sure you hit that like button get yourself subscribed now i've unlocked this data i'm going to be doing more testing with lots of different cars road cars race cars mid-engine front engine cars and see how they generate heat in their tires i think it's going to be really really interesting guys make sure you've got that bell smashed so you'll be notified whenever we upload a new video as you can see in this big break are now we really generate heat in the front tires but only momentary heat those small peaks of heat don't seem to stay in the tire to really get the tire hot and maintain its temperature you need to have a sustained tire load over time and that really starts to bring the heat into the tires so 
the fronts are about 10 degrees colder than the rears at the moment and I, no matter how i drive i really can't balance this out it's, look at that there we purposely <laughs> purposely go deep get a lot of steering on and really peak the front tire temperatures but we just really aren't getting the temperature in the front tires especially that front left tire which you'd kind of expect from this anti-clockwise track now here's an interesting one the braking into turn one this time i'm going to come off the brakes a lot earlier and trail brake a little bit less into the corner and you see the front tires they barely really get any spike of temperature so trail braking pushing those front tires beyond that traction zone as i'm going to link in the end of the video is going to really help to save tire temperature and i think in turn saves tire wear it's worth noting that throughout this entire video i'm running brake balance all the way to the front this is the way the car works best this is the way the tire wear works best and it's interesting that we still can't generate enough front tire temperature what i'm going to do right now is skip forwards run two five lap stints side by side one using a technique to try and save the tires and one using a completely normal driving technique on the left side of the screen is a completely normal driving technique on the right side of the screen is me trying to balance the tire temperatures front and rear by driving in a slightly different way the sound is from the clip on the right hand side of the screen and specifically you'll notice in the downshifts i'm going to really delay my downshifts i'm trying my hardest to really minimize the amount of rear tire wear temperature and load we put through them so for every single big braking zone i'm going to be really uh, hanging on to those downshifts in the center of the screen on the left and the right is the right hand set of tires for both of the cars i've ignored left and right because there's a bit of confusion between left and right tire wear so i've got aligned on screen the right side tire wear for both of the runs and here is where you'll really see the difference check out the gears listen to the downshifts As you can see there, we're really loading the rear tires a lot less in the downshifts and using only the brake braking without any engine braking. And you see already there's a, a one degree difference, temperature difference between the rear tires. In, in fact, all of the tires seem to be one degree lower all around using that slightly balanced driving style. Into the big braking zone here, you can see we're going quite deep in the balanced driving style, really overloading that front tire. But as you can see, the front tire recovers really quite quickly. So any, any of those peak temperatures, spike temperatures, either through wheel spin, lock up, um, uh, aggressive turning while braking, any big peak temperature spike, it just goes away. The only way to generate really true tire temperature is to just load the tires over time. Look at that one, 101 degrees with a big steer. Just And that driving style for the balanced tire wear, I'm trying my hardest to really work those front tires and get those front tires to a higher operating temperature and then be really kind to the rear tires to just allow a little bit less tire temperature, a little bit less tire wear, hopefully. And we'll see how this one plays out. Skipping forwards a few laps and we are saving a little bit of tires using the balanced driving style saving about one degree of tire temperature both front and rear so we are making subtle and very small improvements to our tire wear but perhaps nothing worth the compromise for speed and driving style uh, let me know what you think in the comments below now i've got access to this secret data from gran turismo 7 i'm going to be conducting a lot more experiments a lot more testing so make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you've got that bell notification smashed so you don't miss out on any new uploads on screen right now will be a link to a video explaining the traction circle trail braking all of these things combined with tire temperatures especially will really help you to save tires in gran turismo 7.